It's just teasing me, it's just kind of... <laughs> but he was, when he was running the Velvet Underground in down the village, I didn't, I, I understood everything he was doing. I remember when pop art began. Uh, exactly, I knew most of them. I was in Manhattan at the time and I was a priest. I lived at St. Michael's and I was taking a course, an extra graduate course at uh, NYU's Institute. And I remember the day uh, Goldwater came in, he was a professor who was really authority on uh, New York contemporary work. And, and he said, you can go down to this gallery. The um, gallery owner allowed us in to see the work that was going to go on exhibition. And it was work by um, Lichtenstein, Warhol, a whole slew of uh, pop art. And I thought to myself, there, this is going to be presented. There's no <laughs> question about it. The, the, and they know how to market it. And they said, yeah, that's what they're gonna do. And that's what they did. I couldn't believe it, but they changed the whole world culture. Now, we believe, people like myself, believe that the major force to change culture in late 20th century was the um, algorithmic revolution. Mm. And I still hold that when the history is finally written on late 20th century, what's going to be valued as the pioneer work in digital, and um, that's changed world culture. And it's every bit of the change, the, um, the algorithmic revolution ha affected not just cultural change, but the industrial change, the whole world, everything changed. Mm. In a, in more than the industrial revolution, with the motor, and the engine, and I've lectured on this a lot, with the motor and the engine, when it came into existence, um, you know, what it was was this. I can explain that to you. We, we, always had, we, we always had something. We had water wheels that, mm -hmm. that could do some work. Um, that preceded the engine. And... Um, and the trick with water wheels in some ways is almost the same, but not quite. What was new to make the engine happen was something that's called the compound crank. And it's like you have a wheel. Let's say this were a wheel. And you had an axle in it off center. Mm -hmm. Then you, ha you have that axle off center, then you have an arm touching that axle, and it goes, it goes, <laughs> and it turns that wheel, <laughs> that runs the train. That gives you an idea of what they call compound crank. Now the invention of the engine with compound crank together initiated the industrial revolution. <laughs> It wasn't just initially for the train, it did other work, but it was pretty obvious that once we had that engine, there was going to be all kinds of engines. That's why you have the pistons on, the, 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 on, the, on your automobiles. It's all, it's, it's a, it's a, it's, that, this is what's interesting. <laughs> now, that's run that revolution changed everything, everything, transportation, um, pr production of goods. Um, pretty soon we had machines doing work that men used to do. Before the Industrial Revolution, I can show you pictures, and I gave a lecture on this once, pictures where you would have um, men with wheelbarrows. Wow. And you, you'd have 50 of them. Each one is 
pushing the wheelbarrow up the hill, dumping the dirt and coming around, getting another one, going up, and then it would just go around. <laughs> they could move this mountain of crap over to this mountain of well, whatever they were doing. But there were no trucks. There was a horse and a car springs. So was, but the Industrial Revolution came, and we had these engines, and we had trucks, and we had steam shovels. Where's the little guy running some spot on here? It was a huge amount of them. So this changed everything. But you thought, people thought, thought when I grew up, this was amazing when we started to build all the stuff that came out of World War II. Was really, everybody thought this was the top. This was everything. But it was the beginning then of something else because we had the first uh, computers. And then, so the last half of the 20th century, and my lectures, and Tom, you got some of this yet, mm -hmm. and I'd already come to this point of understanding it. Now we have people in the 21st century who forget that, hey, the groundwork was done in the 20th century. My, my code was intelligent code and was artificial intelligence. And we were the first to do it. Of course, today you can do it fantastically better, but I still have my old machines. Um, you can't beat what we did. Well, I, I have done. a article from the Minneapolis Star Trib yeah. that had you uh, uh, mentioning you as the grandfather of algorithmic art. <laughs> yeah, they said, <laughs> well, that was a little bit embarrassing for me because I'm not the grandfather, but I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm one of the pioneers. But um, strangely enough, the person who was here that year uh, was Frieder Naki, who came from um, Metten, um, not Metten, but um, Bremen in Germany. And he was the first person to ever write code for a computer. So he would, when he, I was, it was a little bit embarrassing because he was one of the keynote speakers for the conference. And I, I was a speaker, but I wasn't keynote. And, I, and when I saw the front page, I thought, yeah, well, maybe Frieder should have gotten that front page, but I got it. So <laughs> <laughs> I got it. But in a way, I did more than Frieder. Uh, because I founded the Algoras and I published a lot and pushed. And Frieder has tremendous respect for what I've done. But he was in it earlier, much earlier than me. And he, but he wasn't an artist. That's a big difference. And what he did was he wrote some software for the first, for, to make a drawing. And he did some kind of a drawing that sort of mimed something that Paul Clay had done. And it's classic, and it, it is important work. And, but he didn't really know, didn't come to it as an artist. And um, so it was my generation. Um, we were I'm actually older. The difference is that I had 30, 40 years experience as an artist before I touched the com before we had computers mm. that for doing that. Mm -hmm. So this is what. He was younger, without any experience in art, um, uh, but he does have tremendous respect for me and my work. And uh, he had me come to the university there as a guest, actually, for three months. Wow! And he um, he's a good person. <laughs> Still, he's. 